This is my second video after almost getting killed for whistleblowing. You can watch my first video for more information about my situation. A lot has happened since the last video was made. I finally made it to a place which should be safe for a while. I am staying in a nice cabin with snow-covered mountains and a bright warm fire in the fireplace. There are certain theories put forth by the Flat Earth community to explain certain things. Some are close, but many miss the mark in explaining how the global Earth delusion is made. Over the next few weeks, I want to provide some of the inside evidence before something happens to me. This week, I want to go into a very non-technical discussion of satellites, what they are, and how they work in a flat earth model. Before I start, I want you to know that I have been in contact with both WikiLeaks and the Guardian newspaper concerning the release of absolute proof that I have managed to obtain. Both have expressed their great concern about leaking this information. Their experts are looking into the risk involved. I hope things work out, but we must remain aware, that there are people on the inside of every industry that will do what they can to stop exposure of their world. This information is very dangerous for me because a lot of people will be exposed. One thing to consider is the economic impact that exposure to all of the deception will cause. I have considered this and the exposure of the lies is more important than the short-term effects. As I said, I want to begin a discussion on satellites today. There are all sorts of explanations about satellites, which has been a thorn in the side of the flat earth community. Some people might suggest they are actually balloons similar to weather balloons, or aircraft, while some say they even exist and float around above the earth. Still others claim they do not exist at all and we really get all of our satellite signals from the ground. This is another one of those illusions that is in plain sight and I am a bit surprised at the flat earth community because they are very good at discerning the truth, but this one, I don't believe anybody has quite figured out. Satellite uplink and downlink dishes are real. The uplink beams a signal toward the sky, and the downlink receives a signal and that signal actually comes from the sky and not the ground. Any electronic technician can tell you why a dish would have to pick up a signal from the sky, due to the way they are made, and they have to be aligned to an exact location in the sky. So, if there are no satellites, where does the signal come from? A balloon? Everybody by now should know that balloons are pushed by the winds. Satellite antennas that are used for geostationary satellites do not move. Can you imagine what a nightmare it would be to make the illusion of satellites by putting up balloon after balloon to keep at least one in front of all of the satellite dishes? Since there are supposedly a lot of satellites in geostationary orbit, the nightmare would be even worse. Another problem is that balloons big enough to carry a transponder would be like large weather balloons which can often be seen from the ground, especially when the sun is at a low angle in the sky and lights it up. All of these balloons would be seen by someone and they would also have to come down somewhere. No, satellites are not balloons. Nor are they aircraft. Satellites are also not floating around over the flat plane. It is really quite simple. Engineers have been able to take advantage of some very unique properties of the dome which covers the Earth. If any of you watch science fiction shows like Star Trek, there are hints into all of these things that are hidden, just like in many movies. Star Trek actually uses theoretical science to come up with its explanations and far-out technology. In one of the early Star Trek movies when they went back to the 20th century to get an endangered whale, they needed some material to make a whale tank in the Enterprise. They visited a supplier of transparent materials, but could not find any that was strong enough. Scotty sat down at the computer and gave the man a molecular matrix that he called transparent aluminum. Transparent aluminum only exists in theory, but it is said to have unique properties. One of those properties was changing the incident angle of an electromagnetic wave from a normal reflected signal. Without getting technical, I will try to describe what I mean. When you shine a light on a window or shiny surface, the light reflects at the same angle that it arrives. In other words, a mirror placed at a 45 degree angle will bounce light in a manner that it will turn a 90 degree corner. Back during the late 50s and early 60s, 
scientists were probing the dome with stronger and shorter wavelength radio signals. When their technology improved they found a strange phenomenon. When a radio signal hit the dome, it did not reflect off at the same incidence angle. The radio signal somehow excited the molecules in the dome in such a way that it appeared to retransmit the signal back at the same angle of the radio wave from the ground. This was a revolution for two different groups of people and those at the top had a brainstorm. They had just discovered a way to simulate satellites to keep their illusion going in the face of better technology, plus, this could actually be used to communicate very wide band signals over far areas across the Earth. In order to understand why this is important, you have to know a bit about radio and communications. Radio signals are based on frequency, or cycles per second which is called hertz. Radio signals on low frequencies such as AM broadcast can bounce through the ionosphere, but this is not reliable and changes during the time of day. Another big problem is that the lower the frequency the less bandwidth it can carry. Digital video signals require a lot more bandwidth. The higher the frequency that is used for communication, the more bandwidth you can use. But, when you get up to microwave signals which are billions of cycles per second the signal will only go in a straight line and will not bounce off of the upper atmosphere. Let's go back and look at the dome. Because of the unique properties of what we engineers call, coherent reflection, satellite dishes can uplink a signal to the dome and it will reflect back down along the same path. But a secondary signal also bounces off at the same incident angle. This allows bouncing it so that it can be picked up not only locally, but in other countries. But, there was a huge problem. Although radio signals were bouncing off of the dome, they were very weak due to the distances involved. I will provide you the exact dimensions of the dome in a later video. It is well understood and has been probed and measured. Another characteristic that was shown in the transparent aluminum model was related to its electrical charge and its excitability to enhance radio signals that it reflects by resonant molecular motion. If only a way to add a small electrical charge to the dome could be figured out, but this was obviously beyond their capabilities. At least until hydrogen bomb tests in the 50s proved that strong electromagnetic signals called EMP pulses are created with bursts at high altitudes. Secret discussions between the United States and the Soviet Union were held after the scientists determined that with a specified number of upper atmospheric air bursts were planned. To this day, I do not know the exact number. The Soviets and Americans set off several at different locations to make this work. These started in 1958 and the first commercial use of a fake satellite by private industry occurred when Echo 1 was supposedly launched in 1960. After the final charging bursts were fired in 1963 the second fake Echo was launched, while an uplink downlink were provided for international live television signals between Europe and the United States. The atomic tests worked exactly as the engineers predicted, but there is a problem that has started. Although the charge lasts for years, even decades, it is beginning to drop. The physics of the way the charge works is not linear, so as it drops the reflected signals do not drop, until this charge gets below a certain level. Since atomic tests have been supposedly banned, scientists had to come up with another reason to set off a few atomic booster bursts to keep the charge above this threshold. They had to figure out another way to explain to people why they were setting off atomic bombs in the sky. Along came a new idea, what if the Earth was threatened by something and what better thing than an asteroid? Of course, both Russia and the United States could design and employment nuclear-tipped rockets to either destroy and nudge a large asteroid over. All of a sudden there are asteroids passing between us and the moon making near misses. This is a planned programming of the population, so that when the time comes to set off a few more atomic bombs that can be seen from the ground, there will be no question what they are used for. Just like the global illusion. We have come a long way since the first television broadcast that supposedly used the Echo satellite which was a large inflatable balloon covered with mylar and flashed aluminum. Once they discovered the dome could be used for radio communications there was a need for more channels and thus more satellites. This is where a big problem for engineers occurred. 
when the signal hit the dome and reflected it spread out and it was impossible to reflect different signals within a few degrees of each other off of the dome. Engineers who had developed radars for the Navy and military had used a system called phased array antennas at microwave frequencies to scan very narrow beam radar signals up and down. I do not want to go into detail on this video because it requires a lot of math. If there are those of you who have technical questions about this, please comment and I will provide you with more information. Suffice it to say that by using phased array antenna techniques they were able to send signals into the adjacent spots that are 180 degrees out of phase which cancel the spreading effect. This allows the engineers to put more of the imaginary satellites up and also provide industry with a lot of bandwidth and communications. So satellites are fake, but then again, they are not. The dome with its unique characteristics allows this illusion to exist and also the billion dollar satellite communications industry. In the next week, I will go into GPS and exactly how it works with the accuracy that it does. I will also go into some very top secret uses of the dome to actually spy on other countries and thus creating the illusion of military spy satellites. Finally, I will cover microwave links on the earth and explain why they actually do use earth curvature when they design a path, but why this is an illusion that was built in to fool the average electronic engineer. I welcome questions and if I don't know the answer will try to contact someone who does. In the meantime, I hope that I can get the information I hold published soon so that we can expose this and I can return to public life. Wish me luck.